Hello, folks. Welcome to another edition of the Whiskered Woodcarver. I am Jeff C. And today we're going to be continuing to uh, carve this little booger right here. Well, this one's already carved, but we're going to carve one just like it. And we're going to be using uh, the flex cut detail knives that I have down below in the um, in the feed, and they're wonderful little knives. I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and go to the carving cam really quick. I'll let you guys look at that. So this is the uh, the flex cut, one of the detail knives. You get this one right here, uh, the, and I really like this one. It's really great. Um, the other one that you get is this uh, mini chip carving knife right here. So I really like this one as well. So if you do any chip carving, which I don't do a ton of, this one is a great one uh, to get. Let me turn my music down just a little bit. That's a little loud. There we go. Um, so yeah, this one's a great one if you're doing chip carving to get some of the detail work in. Really like this one. But like I said, don't do a ton of chip carving myself, but it's it's a good one for this, this three, knife, three knife set that you get. And this probably is my favorite. This is the uh, flex cut uh, detail mini pelican knife. And I really like this one because it's a little bit flexible on the end and it lets you get into a bunch of the different corners and uh, little nooks and crannies as you're carving. And I really like that one. It's got a different kind of grip on it that I'm still getting used to, I guess. It's not my favorite, but it's not horrible. I mean, I would prefer <clears throat> what is on the uh, the other knife sets for the the kind of their starter set. If you see here, this is a good one. They have a different type of handle. It's more of a kind of a rounded handle and it doesn't have those angles on it. I kind of prefer this one, but you know what? Uh, other than that, I really like that knife. I think it's really great. So uh, yeah, this one, we'll talk about some of those bigger knives in a little bit. But what what I'm we're gonna do to, to finish carving this, we started on it the other day. This is about how far we got. Um, this is our finished product right here, but we're gonna take it and we're gonna go ahead and finish Kind of roughen this out a little bit and then start working uh, at some of the detail around the the hair and the beak and getting some of that stuff rounded probably carved for about an hour uh let me know if you have any questions as we're going along today but um how i started it always starts with this little blank and i just kind of knock out i like this pattern because i don't have to use a bandsaw i can just go right and start carving sitting outside or on a camping trip and i just pretty much mark with a pencil you know where I'm going to make the cuts. Just do it like that, and then I can just go, don't have to do a pattern, don't have to fire up the bandsaw. But I like this, this is basswood, and let me uh, pull up this beaver craft ba uh, basswood. I really like basswood because it's really nice to carve with, it's light, it paints really well. And in fact, this, um, let me go back to the main cam here, this basswood, um, get it in focus. Oh, what's going on with my camera here, just a second. Turn it back on. There we go. There we go. So it's uh, this basswood carving kit. I really like this. You get 16 pieces and they're longer pieces. And so you can get, you know, you have to trim it up a little bit, but um, you can use that one for a little figure, the, the remainder of something or a little practice piece. But I really like uh, this little kit here, this basswood carving kit. I, I really like, I just like basswood. And being able to get it from Amazon and not have to order it, from a specialty place is kind of cool. So, okay, so we got that out of the way. We've got the, let me go back to the carving cam here. So we're gonna start carving on this. As always, you, I don't know if you can see this right here, but that is about 11 stitch scar because I was using the wrong glove. So the gloves that I like are these uh, no cry resistant gloves. And so if you're gonna do any cover, carving, especially in today's time when hospitals are full, you don't want to go to the emergency room, definitely wear one of these. I don't care what you see on YouTube. I don't care who says you don't need to wear a glove. Uh, I am <laughs> I'm there to tell you, you need to wear a glove because uh, it'll protect you. So these, what these do is they don't, they, they don't really protect you from like a stabbing motion like that. It's more of like if you slip and it cro goes across, it's going to, it's going to not cut your hand. And so, Got to make sure you have the right the right gloves for when you are uh, carving, because man, just believe me, it was one slip and then that made me stop carving for about uh, oh a month. So make sure you wear 
these no these no uh, cry resistant gloves when you're carving. Also, uh, one of the things you want to make sure you're doing is that um, I use this. Let me pull it up here. The um, this little cowhide thumb grip for when I'm carving. It's uh, I put it on the I'm left-handed, so I'll put it on my left hand because when I carve and I'm going back, this kind of protects it from slipping on it in that way. And so this is what it looks like new. This is a smaller one. I have, as you can tell, I've used this one and it does a great job. So can't recommend these highly enough. These uh, cowhide thumb grips are really in inexpensive, um, but they are worth saving your thumb. Some guys have tape that they wrap with it and that's, I've used that too, that friction tape. But I just, uh, being able to slip this on and off and not have to unwrap your thumb when you need to go somewhere, it's just really, really handy. Okay, let's go ahead and start uh, doing some carving. Like you said, this is like a Christmas ornament. Some people like them to stand. Some people, you know, I put this little uh, rope on them where you can hang it as an ornament. These are great little gifts uh, to give away. Uh, and it's cool that you can carve them yourself. You know, you can put your name on the bottom and you can start uh, giving these away as gifts. And I, I, I make these all year round because like I said, they're super easy to you to make. And um, yeah, it's people really seem to like them. So we are gonna start. As always, you wanna make sure that you keep your knives um, sharp. And one of the things that I do is I use this little uh, flex cut strip strop. And uh, I like it cause it's small. It fits in um, my bag and I can use it, you know, to pull it out there. I don't, you know, you can, I have some of the long ones where you can really get, get down and dirty and sharpen your knife, but I really like this uh, small one just because it's simple and it fits in my bag and you tell this is a little bit a little bit worn but it has this other side for when you are um, like sharpening your palm tools which these I love the flex cut palm tools and uh, I've got two of them in the the carousel down here below I've got the uh, the the micro tools and the mini tools let me pull those up here I'm not sure which one's gonna come up but um, it's really hard to see have a little uh like a practice thing here where if you can see it just this one will make a little it's perfect for making like beards and like on the top of this um on the hat i'll be using this to put some texture in on the hat but i love these little things and this slip strop what it does on the other side it has these things where you can kind of hone the edges when it starts to get dull and they're made spe specifically for that. And they have different ones for the for the V tools and also some for some of the gouges. And this little a mini strip shop on the st little strop on the back that lets you sharpen as well. So love this little thing. Um, like I said, I keep it in my in my uh, bag. It's small enough that I can just carry it around. The other thing, if you notice, I have a uh, on the end of each of my tools here i have a cork and in the carousel if you don't happen to have one there's a bunch of corks um, in there because nothing's worse than reaching your bag and jabbing yourself so i always have these little corks they have some some leather things you can get go over the top of them i just like corks because they're interchangeable i can just pop them in there and doesn't really matter so uh with that slip strop you want to put this in all like the the knife set here this three knife starter set comes with one it's like a crayon. They call it sharpening compound. And what it does is it helps uh, take a little bit of the metal off of your knife. And I always sharpen um, my my tools. Uh, let's see. I'll get it in the camera here. At the beginning and the end. And then as, it, as I go along during carving, I will uh, continue to do this. It's like a, like a hard crayon almost. And I just put a little bit on the... And it's, this one's lasted me forever. They really do last forever. Um... Put a little bit on the uh, the strop here, and I think I'm going to use this pelican knife from the uh, the set, the detail knife set first. And just a couple little, couple little um, swipes across this strop here gets it nice and sharp. You can see there's that black that comes off a little bit. That's a little bit of pieces of the metal of the knife, so you're kind of just really honing that blade in. Doesn't take much because I keep them sharp. Now, if you get a chip or something in them, then you'll want to, you'll want to, you know, take it to the the grindstone and get it back. But for in between carvings and when you're carving, it'll start to get a little bit of uh, dull, and you'll just, you know, continue to to take it to that strop, get it fixed. 
So I'm just going to continue to whittle this down. I'm going to carve around the edges of the hat here. Just continue to do that. If you're watching, you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm just going to be doing some carving this afternoon. Like I said, I like this little one. Let's me uh, get in some of these spots here. Time we carved, I did a little bit of this. Uh, set this down and just kind of make a little bit of a line here, just like this. For this, I'm going to use this another little detail knife here, just trying to get some of this wood out. like a nice relaxing Sunday afternoon and a little bit of carving Just a little closer you guys can see it the thing I like about these flex cut knives is they they hold their edge for a while or not a while for a, for a good time there's nothing worse when you're carving with a kind of inferior knife that you have to always feel like you're always sharpening these stay razor sharp for a long time. So I'm just kind of rounding down some things. Now, I am not a professional carver. I just do this for fun, for a hobby, which I think carving is a great hobby to have. Not because I like it because I'm away from screens. Of course, I have all these screens going right now, but you get the idea. Questions. Trying to watch my phone. So I'm just trying to. I'm taking. Trying to get that little edge around there. You see, that's where I'll use that V tool later. It's just kind of uh, chomping that. One thing you want to check with your gloves as you're going. You'll notice that when I'm carving, I'm doing a lot using my thumb pushing um, and. I'll start wearing, even this is a cut proof glove, I'll start wearing holes. The cool thing is you'll have two, you'll have two gloves. And so, you know, you can, you'll have another set, another pair to put on, but uh, just watch that. Cause the last thing you do is want to have a, your knife to go in one of those holes that you've carved in your glove. So. kind of looking at you know for this I'm going to pull out one of these from this uh, larger set that I have in the carousel I like some of these big ones for when I need to take some wood off quickly being able to do that just like that never really did kind of finish the back getting it kind of rounded down questions as we're going one of the things somebody said that I thought was really good was that when you're carving you're kind of trying to remove shadows which kind of makes sense you're carving you're taking away things that you know are kind of darker when you when you look at it 
Also remember when you're carving, and this this blade's pretty good, but don't creep up on it too much because if you slip, you'll go and you'll cut that top part of your hand. So you want to keep your fingers back with these. Uh, and let let the knife do the work. Try to try, try to force anything. And the good thing with this basswood is it's relatively easy to carve. And just don't get too crazy trying to take away too much wood at once. And you should be okay. You should be okay. guys are watching what are your favorite hobbies to do like when you can go and sit and do anything is it reading you know, I know some people like to do a lot of crafts that's why I like carving what is your favorite thing to do when you have some free time other than shop on Amazon that is much on the front. I'm going to try to wait for my detail knife. I think I got just everything. I do need to continue. These these balls at the top, I mean, it, it can be however... i made really big ones. i made really small ones. It's all... I've had them hanging off the edge, which is a little bit more detail, but it all comes back to what you're what you're wanting to do, and that's the cool thing. Every, every carving is different. I've made these cuts pretty deep when I did them uh, the other time we were together. And I can just kind of go down there, cut that off with this knife. It just goes down and kind of does that hard little, very satisfying little click when you hit it. It's important to have a, a sharp knife like these flex cuts because a lot of times if you have other ones where they don't they aren't cutting the fibers really well on the uh, on the uh, carving you'll have what I have to call and, and also the same thing if you have like inferior basswood sometimes you'll have just some basswood that's not very good to carve on and um, it will it'll fuzz out on you and so the sharper knives that you have the less of those little what I call little fuzzies show up. Just For me, carving is not a fast sport. <laughs> I take my time. One, I don't want to get cut. Two, it's supposed to be enjoyable and something that's relaxing. <laughs> so I would start, like if you're really wanting to get started, I put some uh, down in the carousel, some books that I really like. In fact, one of them is uh, one where I got this, doing this little bear here. I really like this. I, I've carved quite a few of these little Christmas bears, but the book and the pattern for that is uh, in is in the uh, in the carousel below and he's got some really cool and there's another country bear that he has in that same book down there really really like that style and there that's probably a intermediate probably I'd start with something easier like one of these penguins when you first start um, but th nothing is and if you screw up you can always make it something else I've had many things turn <laughs> into something else as I was carving uh, it's a journey. Some of those carvers I am amazed by. 
those books, the guys who can do the characters, and I put some of those in the, the carousel as well. They are incredible. So I'm just taking some wood off around the uh, this little Pelican Mini Knife by FlexCut. I really like that one. Um, that. Just get in there and just slowly you know and I, I even I've done hundreds and hundreds of these penguins for gifts and to sell and um, I still look and <laughs> see like okay what do I need to do I still have one that I always keep and look at so and I've I've screwed up before and accidentally took off a beak a little bit, so I had to turn him into a short-nosed penguin, which is fine. There's always something, no matter if you're right or left-handed, there's going to be an awkward, like, grip. Just on those times when you feel something really awkward, like right here, it's kind of hard for me. Just go really slow, take little pieces of wood off, and uh, don't rush and have an accident. start rounding his little front here. I'm going to use this bigger knife Oops. to uh, kind of make a little cross cut and you're kind of slicing those grains on the wood there and uh, just kind of Take some wood down there. Sometimes it's easier to go all the way across with these bigger knives. Like that. Because I went down and across, makes it cut a little bit cleaner. I'll do that on this side too. So I'm not pressing down too hard, so I don't want to go to my table. And I can just make that little cut right like that. Go right across. Just like that. Go. And like, I, I didn't leave a lot of room for his, uh, his tail like I usually do on this one. So I'm going to have to just a little bit, but his hat brim may cover up some of his tail. So, so yeah. the other side here. When you need it, you know, go across something. Make sure you set it down so you have something to press against, so you're not going all willy nilly accidentally may slip in your hand. You'll see that I'm always using things to, to, to push against and have control. I'm not just like, you know, like when you're whittling when you're a kid. I'm always very trying to be as controlled as I possibly can. One of my favorite things to do is to... Uh, it's pretty hot here in Texas now, but I, I like to sit outside and uh, listen to podcasts in the evening and uh, do some carving and knock some of these out. These are this, these little penguins are great for uh, for sitting outside and doing real quick. These snowmen too. I still have to cut these snowmen out with a bandsaw, but um, but they're really easy. Once you have a, the pa the pattern done, it's just pretty much taking wood off and rounding things up. And they're another easy one. So if you're looking for an easy uh, an easy one to do, those uh, penguins are good, and those snowmen are nice too. I'll tell you this, the hardest thing for me 
and you'll see when we get to that spot is uh, painting them. That's the that can make you a little nervous. See how nice that the, this little detailed this pelican knife is from Flex Cut. It just really because it has that little that tip that can get in those little crevices. I just really like it popping those out. You want to be able to switch up your knives. You don't want to switch them up all the time, so you have some, you know. But uh, these little detail knives are pretty cool. getting to it's going to start cooling off and this is going to be the time to start sitting down and start carving again outside around the fire one of my favorite things to do try to clean up this a little bit go ahead and start trimming this off right like this His tail stick out a little bit. Let's see. Getting a little bit dull, so I'm going to go ahead and do a little uh, hone in here on this flex strop. So, you guys are just watching this strop, is what I use. I've been using this for, they last forever. I, you know, maybe I need a new one. I don't know. I think this one still works pretty well. Gets it nice and honed. Comes with some of the sharpening compound that lets you, you know, take, it's almost like a hard crayon. But it really does help. Um, keep everything sharp. Because you're just taking a little bit off at a time. You can kind of see some of that black come on. The, the, flex cut when I do that but uh, yeah sharpens are right up but we're using this pelican uh, detail knife which is the only thing I mentioned it before this weird kind of angles it takes a little bit I mean I get it because you you want to have control and you want to get in there be able to grip it but it, it just it's it's weird to me I'd rather have this but it's not worth not getting because of that I mean I, I'm still because of that blade and the thinness it's fine. It's just, just be aware of that. It's got a, a different feel to it. Um, and it might be my hands. It's different for everybody's hands, but just be aware of that. Uh, but it's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not like it's not usable, not unusable. It's just not my preference. But I still, look how easy that cuts it. It's just so nice. All right, I need to start rounding this guy up a little bit. And you need to be careful because it can really dig in because it's so sharp and such a good knife. It can really dig in and you're like, oh, that was a little too much. But it just works really well. I'm just going to start. I don't like to have any flat surfaces, so I always kind of round everything. Kind of round his front down a little bit. See what I'm doing there? Kind of rounding it up. See, it just being, and this basswood's pretty hard wood, but it it really does a good job with this. I mean, it's really good because it can just take off just those little pieces. If you have a little bit of fuzzy stuff, you can just really get in there and get it out. 
Looks good. Makes some good teal. I can't wait till I can talk about the uh, the little palm and micro tools. I really like those a lot. I use those a lot when I'm starting it to put the details on on everything. And that's what we'll use when we put the little fuzz on the hat and on the brim, uh, on the kind of the ruffle of the hat too. So I really really like it. Those both palms and the micro tools are worth getting. around the edges here where the shadows are and around some of that in so if you guys are watching let me know where you're from if you have any questions I'm trying to watch my phone at the same time and not cut my hand open to have a little bit of a a belly I guess up front a little bit I think it looks, looks good no, you can't tell but I, ha I have a thing for Christmas I, I have a feeling you probably figure that out The thing is, you know, so you can see that where I've I made these lines before, and the problem is it makes your your carvings look dirty. It's almost like your hands are racing stuff when you have like a lead pencil on it. But I'll clean all that up beforehand before we paint it. And painting is really simple. That's the thing. Um, you only need a couple colors for this, and you're ready to start painting. And we'll we'll paint sometime here on live and. Let you see how, what that process is. Trim this up a little bit. But yeah, if you guys are just joining us, I'm using the Flex Cut Detail Knife Set. Especially like the Pelican knife, which I'm using right now. It really uh, does a great job for some of these little nooks and crannies. Thin uh, the pelican knife works. And then I'll go ahead and see. I don't like having it like like a block of wood, so I'll I'll round start rounding some of this up a little bit, and I'll take some more down and round it some more, just continuing to eyeball it to to where I think it looks good. And I'm sure there's totally faster ways to do all this, but. I am a novice carver, but I sure enjoy it. And I also like to show people that for a long time I didn't even try any of this because I thought it was so hard and too expensive and didn't know how to get started. It's really not. With the internet now where you can just order stuff and it's pretty amazing. I used to watch wood carvers when I was a kid going, oh, I want to do that. And I just never 
thought I could. And so even now when I'm not a professional, I like to show people like, look, look what you can do. It's just a small investment. And these are knives and, and things that I can, I'll pass down to my kids when I'm dead and buried, old and gone. off a little bit so you see what we're getting there getting there when I'm not you know doing this for live you know I can usually knock one of these out in 30 45 minutes but uh, take my time trying to explain things and again it's not I don't know how fast you can do it. It's the fun and the enjoyment, relaxing. Knowing you're making something you're going to give somebody, they'll like a gift. It's kind of fun. like it's out of a block. It's hard to believe it started out of something like this, though, isn't it? Yeah. See some of you guys are watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Appreciate the follow. If you can follow, that helps me out with Amazon. You guys, uh, just follow me, and you'll see when I go live. and That helps helps me out. take a little bit more off that top so I'm going to use um, some of these bigger knives this is a great uh, starter set right here um, for I mean the the, the uh, detail knives in this set I mean if you got both of these you're pretty set for a while because um, it gives you a lot of things and a lot of tools and a lot of things you can do then you can move on and get some of the uh, when you start doing some detail stuff you could move on and get the uh, the like the micro and mini palm tools which are these things right here which help you uh like put some of the the detail in um but i like this uh this one especially for roughing up wood not rough roughing out some some of your uh, patterns and also i need to sharpen this one and uh also you know taking taking some wood off quickly just like that There we go. Just like that. I mentioned when I was doing this before, this stuff at top is really hard. And so you'll see me take little bits off at a time because it's really hard to get some of that. And I should, once again, I should have sprayed it there. If you spray it with like a, a mixture of rubbing alcohol and water and let it sit, it softens it up and it, it, it does a little bit better. In fact, I should, I have some over there. I should uh, should do that. And here's where this little thumb guard comes in. When I start going back like this, that's where it comes in handy. It's easier to get underneath here when you do that. Just like that. 
And sometimes you'll get in a weird grain where it kind of it's kind of fuzzing out a little bit there. It's just the way the grain works and you just have to work around it. for here so you don't jab yourself in the in the hand and know that your knife sharp but this will dull it a lot faster on that in grain that's why you like I like these big knives for this kind of stuff up at the top everybody for watching. I see there's a couple people here. I'm surprised more people are watching the games right now. pretty pretty big I kind of want it the same size as that more off the top there. Very cool. sharpen this one again start on that pelican knife a little bit more so once again we're using this uh, strop this uh, we call it the slip strop I always can't even remember how to say that so I always like to, to finish up with uh, when I leaving them sharp Compound on. 
see it kind of takes away some of that black. It's nice and sharp here. About time for me to order a new one. Alright. Let's take some more off of this. Just a little bit of time. I just flick, flick that into my coffee mug. I need to remember to clean it or I'm going to have some wood chips in my mouth tomorrow. I really like this. See how I can just really round that off really easy with that pelican knife? Really like that. Just lots of control. Very sharp, easy to round things. So what I'm doing is rounding this this little part right here on the the hat. And that uh, this knife really makes it really easy to uh, to do that. I don't like to have any flat surfaces. I always want everything to have a little bit of carving done with my knife. I'm rounding that, that sharp point that's on the block. I don't want that on there. I want it to be rounded. So I'm slowly looking at that and trying to round it down and taking off enough. And move it to the next. Hey, TW, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. Let me know if you have any questions. Are you a carver yourself? Love to know. It's hard to watch the watch the old uh, convo and not cut yourself. So, let's see with this detail knife, I can go right there, right by that beak. See how slick that was? Man, that was nice. It's always fun trying to do it from the other side, though. Wherever you're not natural for your hand to go. Let's take a little bit off. See how that is? Look at that. Right there. Look at that. Just like butter. Love it. So I want to be able to round that uh, that around the peak, but not, you know, hurt the take any wood off. And so this little these detail knives are really good for or the details. And I haven't, I haven't shown, but this little knife does a lot too. Like it really, like if I wanted to really get in there, and I'll probably use it for when I put these kind of like little folds in the hat. I'll use it for that. Um, but it's, it's also a really, they're, I mean, they're all good. In fact, I like this one right now to kind of do some of this, this little carving. So, so T W says he's never he's uh, have 
never tried, no idea where to start. So, TW, if you look at this, I love um, the this basswood, and I just highlighted it down below. And then these detail knives is what I've, I've used. And then I just, I found, this is a little pattern I did, and I love this one because I don't have to, um, I don't have to really cut anything on a bandsaw. So I would start with something, it's what they call whittling. You know, what could you whittle really easily? And this is one of those things. And so it's just a piece of uh, one by one um, basswood. And then you can just start carving. And there's some books that I have in there. Like, uh, this is probably a little bit more advanced, but this is a, a bear, a Christmas bear. But yeah, uh, I, I love these detail knives and this stuff for flex cut. So you can start with one knife or, or two. Um, just make sure you keep thing, keep things sharp. What are you interested in carbon, um, TW? Just don't wait. I waited too long to start because I had the same thing. It's like, I don't know where to start. Where do I do? And um, I just kind of put it off. And I wish I would have started. Some of these guys have been carving that like write these books since they were, uh, like, you know, 12, 13. And they are kill. They just, their stuff is amazing. But uh, if I can do it, you can do it. Just start something like simple like this penguin. I'll have to. Sh uh, I'll try to pull out next time my uh, my first carving that I ever did. It was pretty rough, but it was something simple. That's all I needed. But I do appreciate the follow. So I've probably been carving uh, seven years, I think, now. Um, I try to carve, and I haven't lately, but I used to try to carve about at least 30 minutes a day. Uh, but I don't do that anymore. I wish I would have. But uh, So it's not been long compared to some other ones. And like this, these, this penguin pattern is one of the first things... Uh, you know, I ever did, and I still carve it because so many people like it, and it's really pretty simple. Uh, you can see it's just, it's really simple, but people really, people love hand carved gifts, and uh, doing something like this impresses a lot of people. And once you can knock a bunch out, you can, you can, uh, you can really uh, get your gifts done. But yeah, uh, I mean, I was I was actually selling my stuff after uh, the first year or so. I mean, you don't have to. I mean, if there's a market for it, I was selling these little penguins. I had a bunch of them I made because that's what I kind of trained myself on. And uh, I had a bunch of them and somebody bought all of the ones I had in my collection. They wanted to give them away as for Christmas. So that was pretty cool. So, but I, I wouldn't. I don't want to, I'm not trying to make, do this as a money maker. This is just, this is a hobby for me. This is what I like to do. I'm always, I was even scared to stream this because when you start thinking it as a job, then it quits being fun. So I'm going to use this bigger knife here, this flex cut one, just because I am, the way my hand is, it's just hard for me to get this flat part off. Sometimes you just need the extra extra reach with the longer knife. But I've seen some of these these old timers who can they do everything with like one knife. And they're amazing. But I really like these flex cuts. got quite a bit done today We've got about five more minutes I think I'll wrap it up got a lot done on this little penguin get my little knife out these little flex cut uh, this little detail knife that I'm using I'm just making real small cuts
this this short one gives you a little bit more uh oh angle where you can you kind of kind of push it a little bit more than this this thin little this one's really good for getting in these little thin little places it's got a little little bit of give to it the pelican knife does so uh yeah Get in there, get in there. Need to take some more around this hat rim here. Looks like that. Just As a starter book, there's one. I don't have it in my carousel, uh, TW. It's a uh, look for one on Whittling. I think it's by uh, the same one, but there's like Whittling uh, figures, and it's pretty much one that you can have for a starter, like a um, just have one knife in a in a, a piece of wood. And so, look up Whittling. Like uh, like I think there's a, like 101 projects to whittle or something like that. I'll I, I'll try it if I can after this this show is add that into my uh, carousel. But that would be the one um, I would start with with the book. And there's a lot of good YouTube videos uh, on on carving that I wish I would have. I, I wish when I was a kid were there. Um, but that's what I would start at is uh, start with something like whittling and then kind of move your way up and then you can add stuff because when you start adding. Um, like the palm tools will let you do some details and stuff. That's kind of cool. And it, you know, you can spend a lot of money on, on tools, but a lot of times when you, like when I first started, I had one knife and I think I had one palm tool, like a V tool that let me put like, uh, things in beards and stuff like that. So yeah, <laughs> there is a ton of stuff, but there, that book is, um, the book is, um, gosh, it's something whittling. Let me, let me look. Uh, hang with me here. I'll just Google it real quick. Well, I don't have my I don't have my uh, keyboard because I'm carving. But it's about whittling. If you look, it, it's there, and I'll try to drop it in uh, in that carousel later. But uh, yeah, you just you know, and I would start. It depends on what you want to do. If you just want to goof around, then I would get like the one like this this uh, this starter set of because you don't really need a detail one if you're going to whittle, and you can do some stuff with that so this this one gives you a good selection and like you, you don't really need a, the detail knives until you really want to you can do a lot with those those bigger flex cut knives and then get some wood um and just know it's not going to look good <laughs> at first uh i like i wish i could show you my first one um but just yeah just keep at it the thing is it's not you know it's it's for you to be you know just even if it's at first you're just taking a block and making it to a point or rounding it over, it's just something about making wood chips fly for me that's just super, super relaxing. So that's what I would do. Sorry I don't have that book for you in the carousel. I didn't even think about it.
And there's even some of the, like the master carvers have blanks you can buy from them where they've done some of the work for you and you can just kind of finish it out. I have a couple, I've never actually done them. Uh, so, good. I hope I've given you a motivation, TW, to do this because it's just so much fun. Like I said, I am not, I'm sure there's faster and better ways to do things, but I just love sitting and carving and not having screens. Well, I've got screens right now and you have screens right now, but you know what I mean? Like sitting outside, not having to worry about email or the office or any of that stuff and just, you know, chilling and doing something with your hands. I think it's just, let me know, TW. Come, I'm going to try to do some more of these lives and I'd love for you to stop back by and let me know. You know, if you have any questions, you can, if you have any questions, hit me up anywhere on socials at Jeff C. It's on the screen there down at the bottom. Um, and I'll, and, I'll and, and like on Twitter, if you're on Twitter, hit me up at Jeff C. DM me and I'll try to uh, get you that book that I, that I had. Um, and uh, answer any questions you have. I'm more than happy to help you figure that out. Um, but yeah, something about carbon is just, and I think it's one of those, I don't know, lost, not lost, but, you know, they're, they're not teaching shop as in school anymore as much as they used to. And I just think it's something that we need to hold on to. But seriously, any, anywhere, Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook. Hit me up and I'll uh, I'll help you out as much as I can. Yeah, it is. It's like back to the basics. And the thing is, is you know some of these these craftsmen. I don't know if you watch. Um, I'm really a big fan of Mike Rowe. He used to do dirty jobs, but you know, I'm there's a lot. There <laughs> stuff is breaking and we don't know how to fix it because everybody who used to be able to do that stuff is not around anymore. And there is something to say about like. Some of the stuff we need to teach and, and learn and pass down. And, and plus, it's just cool. I think we're going to, I think we've been going for yeah over an hour. And so I'm going to go ahead and start getting things a little cleaned up here. And you can see we made quite a bit of progress today. We're getting our little, uh, little penguin. We're getting there, getting there. He's coming together. Going to clean up the hat a little bit more. Still doing around the, uh, the edges there but remember it's the journey it's not the well it is the end thing but you know it's half the fun is the journey so i'm gonna go ahead and sharpen my knives as i do at the end of uh all of my shows so they are nice and ready for the next one got that one all done uh, i always like to put them in a corks because i don't like to hit those in my bag so i'll just go ahead and sharpen this one. We didn't use it too much, but still. Go ahead and sharpen it a little bit. Always keep your knives sharp. Put it in there, and the big one. We'll go ahead and put some more of this on there. Sharpen this one right up. Just like this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little time together as we uh, continue to carve our little penguin using these awesome flex cut uh, detail knives. And as, of course, they're all down there below in the carousel. And if uh, always, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up anywhere on the socials. I have that down below right on this side. There we go. Right there at Jeff C. Uh, you guys can hit me up and ask me any questions anywhere you have about carving or anything else. And I appreciate it. You guys have a safe rest of your weekend. I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.